we rarely think about one of the most important things that we do, breathing. It's a mostly involuntary mechanism, but the average human being can voluntarily hold their breath for approximately one minute, and that's something I'd like to try now. So when I tell you, and if you're able, I'd like you to take a deep breath and hold it. Okay, you ready? Take a deep breath and hold it. While you're holding your breath, several things are happening. Your body is continuing to consume oxygen, and so the oxygen in your blood is falling. Simultaneously, the body's producing carbon dioxide, and so the carbon dioxide in your blood is rising. And this is an unsustainable situation, and your body's going to have to do something about it, so you'll start to feel an increase in the drive to breathe. Can you feel it? Can you feel it now? Okay, you can carry on breathing. I don't want people fainting. For the last 30 years, I've researched the neuronal control of breathing, specifically looking at the mechanisms that underpin the drive to breathe. When oxygen falls in the blood and carbon dioxide rises, it stimulates two little organs in your neck called the carotid bodies. They're about the size of a grain of rice in man. And when stimulated, these fire nervous signals to your brain, forcing you to breathe. And the oxygen goes back up again, and the carbon dioxide goes back down. It's a really powerful homeostatic mechanism. In fact, you can't commit suicide by holding your breath, even if you're incredibly stubborn. You'll hold your breath, faint, fall on the floor, and carry on breathing again. Now, my laboratory is particularly interested in disease states that change the control of breathing such as sudden infant death syndrome and sleep apnea. But we're also really interested in medicines that change the way we breathe. And one of the classes of medicine that I'm particularly interested in are the opioids. Now, you've probably heard about the fact that regionally and nationally, the USA has a problem with opioid abuse. But what you probably don't know is that opioids kill you by suppressing your breathing. Now, in my teaching of students in the laboratory and also in the classroom, it quickly became apparent that the students didn't know that opioids suppress breathing. But it went much deeper than that. The students didn't really know very much about opioids at all. Some of my students thought that if they went for surgery and were prescribed opioids to help with the recovery, they'd end up as junkies. Now, opioids are some of our best painkilling medication. And yes, they are addictive. But they help people living in terrible pain to lead a relatively normal life. And so for that reason today, I'd like to talk a little bit about what happens to your brain when you take an opioid. Now, most of us are aware that in our bodies, we have a natural opioid system, the endorphins. And the endorphins are responsible for the runner's high, and also for why spicy food can be so addictive. But the endorphins do so much more than that. They're responsible for how we perceive happiness and also sense reward after we've done a job well. They're involved in our gut motility. They're involved in modulating our breathing and regulating our body temperature. In fact, endorphins are involved in a host of normal, physiological and psychological processes. So what happens then if we have surgery and we're prescribed an opioid? Well, the same thing that happens if you take an opioid simply to get high. It feels good. In high doses, opioids produce euphoria. And they help us manage the pain that we're in but not just physical pain, psychological pain as well. The stresses and strains of everyday life fade away when you take an opioid. It's one of the reasons why they're so addictive. Then what happens if we continue taking this dose of opioid? Well, our brain begins to change. The receptors on the nerves in the brain that the opioids act on start to be removed from the nerve membranes. They get fewer and fewer and fewer. 
And this has significant consequences. Now, the dose of opioid that we're taking doesn't kill as much pain, and it doesn't produce the high that we're expecting. We've become tolerant to the opioid. Now, following surgery, this is fine, because as we develop tolerance to the opioids, we're actually healing, and so we need less drug anyway, and so we can safely take the opioids away, and there'll be very few side effects, which is great news. But if you have a more severe pain condition, say like bone cancer, or you're chasing that high, you're going to have to start taking more opioid. And our brains continue to change. Those receptors are taken out of the nerves until we have so few receptors in our brains for the opioids that even though we're taking a high dose of opioid, it just makes us feel normal. And if at that point we stop taking the opioid, we'll go into withdrawal. We are dependent on that opioid. Now let's think a little bit back about what happens with our endogenous or natural opioid. The endorphins help us feel happiness and reward and are involved in a host of physiological mechanisms. But in withdrawal, we don't have any of that. We've got virtually no receptors in the brain for the opioids. We've completely suppressed our endogenous or natural opioids. We enter a painfully abnormal state. Diarrhea, cramping, we can't control temperature, anxiety. It's a horrible situation. But at the same time, our brain is recovering. And those receptors are starting to be put back into the nerves. And this is a really, really dangerous period of time. It varies from individual to individual in the time that these receptors get put back in. But why is it dangerous? Well, we're in withdrawal and it's awful. And the fastest way to get back to being normal is to take more opioid. But if we take the same amount of opioid that we were taking before we went into withdrawal, will massively overstimulate all of these new receptors that have been put back into the brain. And will suppress our drive to breathe from our carotid bodies and from the brain. And we'll stop breathing and we'll die. Now, this is extremely unlikely to happen with cancer patients. Their medications are well managed and monitored. But with a recreational opioid user, it's incredibly likely that it's going to happen. So what can we do to stop the overdose? Well, we can take Narcan or Naloxone. And what Narcan does is it sits on all these receptors in the brain and it stops them from functioning. And it will reverse the overdose. The drive to breathe will come back and we'll survive. But what Narcan doesn't do is cure an addiction. Indeed, my friend Shawnee overdosed and was brought back more than 10 times. If you take an addict that's overdosed and you recover them with Narcan and then you put them back in the same environment where they overdosed, then it's incredibly likely that they'll overdose again. They'll take opioid again. Why? Well, they're in withdrawal and it's awful. And the opioid is a shortcut back to normality. So what can we do? Well, we can treat them like human beings. We can provide skilled therapists to help them root out the causes of addiction. We can provide them with social services to help with difficult family situations. And we can even give them a sense of reward by helping them get a job. Long-term treatment is essential for rehabilitating opioid addicts. My friend Shawnee, she's been clean for years now. And this morning, she saved someone's life in a car park by administering Narcan. Now, what have I hoped to do with this talk? Well, I've hoped that you understand now that opioids can be safe and effective medicine when used correctly. And yes, they're addictive, and now you know a little bit more about why they're addictive. And yes, they're dangerous, and now you know a little bit more about why they're dangerous. 
And I truly believe that we can treat opioid addicts better. It's going to take more time, more money, more people, and an awful lot more compassion. Is it worth it? Oh, absolutely it's worth it. I've spent the last 30 years of my life focused on keeping people breathing. And I'm not going to lose that focus now.